Okay. Uh, apologies for this event. Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the webinar on streamlining your processes using value stream mapping. In the last webinar, we covered uh, copious and you could view the recording of this webinar under lasip.org in the download section. Uh, quick ground rules before we start the webinar. Hi, this is Ujwal Tripurari. I'm the global evangelist with LASIP Society. The total duration of the webinar would be 45 minutes and the presentation would be for 30 minutes. 15 minutes would be allotted for the Q&A. You can post your questions on the webinar chat box so you could see to your right hand side. The video of this webinar will be available uh, for others to view again at the lasip.org in the download section. The links would be given to you. The presentation is again downloadable, uh, is available only for our professional and corporate members. In case if you face any problems or for any queries, uh, please contact Mr. Varun Kare. The email ID is contact at classic.org and his mobile number is mentioned below. Okay, so let's start the webinar. Value stream mapping. What is value stream mapping? Value stream mapping, uh, as per the definition, is a method of creating a single page picture of all the steps that occur in a process or service, from the time a customer places an order to the time it is delivered to them. For example, uh, if a person is ordering something online, if we create the process in a single picture, the steps should be followed from keep registering online, then ordering for the pro product online, and then that order would be go to the would be going to the third party website and he would then check their inventory for the stock available. If it's not available then again he'll place an order with the vendor. Then the vendor would ship uh, the product. Then the product would be in traffic for a few days and then it would be delivered to the customer. So this is the entire process flow of the customer placing an order and receiving it at his home. So all this process with the entire flow like the lead times, the delay, the transit time, everything should be mapped in a single picture with different flows that would give the value stream mapping of the entire process. The goal of a value stream mapping uh, map is to depict the material information flow across and throughout all the value adding processes required to produce or ship the product to the customer. A value stream map uh, documents all the process used to produce and ship the product both which are value adding and non value adding such as waste like uh, delay or lead time or transit time where the customer has to wait for the product to be delivered to him. Why do we need a value stream map? Value stream map uh, helps you to identify what are the waste or the non value adding processes that are in your flow and it helps you identify them very easily. Once uh, we create a current state of a value stream map, it becomes a baseline for improvement and for the creation of a future state value stream mapping. But there could also be a question, when do you need to use a value stream map? If you think your customers are being waited for a long time or a delay occurring in your process or you think your process could be made much more faster or efficient, I think the best tool from the lean tools would be to use value stream mapping. If you look at the process flow diagrams in the slide, uh, the top diagram depicts a continuous flow which is an ideal scenario where there are no interruptions or discrepancies in between and the customer is satisfied and in the second diagram if you could see there are many interruptions being happened between the vendor and the customer. These are these could be delays or lead times or any process uh, which have gone wrong, which will make the customer wait for many times. And these are all non-value adding services to the customer. So before we get into how do we create a value stream map, let us uh, discuss about what are value adding services and non-value adding services. A value adding activity changes the form, fit or a function of a product or a service or in other words you could say these are the things which the customer is finally willing to pay. Uh, 
And activities that do not add value to the process are called non-value adding activities. These are again something which the customer would not be willing to pay. Again, how do you make a process efficient? So that is by a non-value add can be either eliminated, uh, reduced, simplified or made emotional. How do you make a process emotional? That is like uh, connecting with your customer, making sure that they are happy. That is making a process more emotional. Now, we could talk about how we could make a single non-value add activity emotional in the further slides where we take examples. So again, uh, if you're talking about value add and non-value added activities, uh, industry research says that typically a value stream ratio of value added to non-value added activities is 97% to 3%. That means that if there are 100 steps in a process out of them, 97 would be non-value adding and only 3 out of them would be value adding to the customer. And Again, uh, typically the industry research says that most process improvement teams attach the 3% of the value adding services to and try to make the process more efficient. And they ignore the other 97% of non-value adding services. So, which is where the real opportunity is lying. Example like uh, in one of the organizations there was there was a, a process of uh, collecting ideas from the employees. So what the process initially was that uh, there was a drop box where each of the employee would uh, write down their idea and drop in it. And then at the end of each week or each day one guy comes and collects all the ideas and collates them into a and then he takes those to the committee who will decide if these ideas could be implemented or not. And the committee had like three, four members again who would each one on one after the other uh, go through the ideas. Then they would anonymously decide if one if the idea has to be implemented or not. What was happening was that uh, each of these committee members were again senior leaders, and when one had time, the other wouldn't have time. So there was a uh, a delay and a lead time being created and all of these ideas were just lying over there and none of them were being implemented. This caused a lot of dissatisfaction between the employees as well and none of them were interested to generate more new ideas again. So how did uh, they come upon to remove all this big process flow where there is a lot of non-value added activities like going to the box, dropping ideas into the box, waiting for the seniors to look upon that. All this had been, uh, all the flow had been interchanged by an online intervention. All they had did was have an online process of submitting the ideas. The user had to go to the portal, submit their ideas and just click on submit. And this would directly send these ideas to the mailboxes of the senior leaders. So they again just saw the ideas, if they felt it was good, they reduced to tick market and once everyone had reviewed it, it would just directly go into approval. And the process which you should, for a single idea to take, uh, uh, take at least two to three weeks would now only, or This is how the process was optimized and all the non-value adders were removed. Typically non-value adders are ways which are like uh, defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilizing of employees, transportation, inventory, motion, excess of processing. So for us to remember all this, uh, we have just have a terminology which is like downtime where 
each of this, these types of defects and so on and so forth. Moving forward, uh, let us now look at how do we define the value stream map. A value stream map again works as a blueprint for a lean implementation. The first, there are four steps in creating the value stream map. The first one would be identifying the value stream for the product being worked on. I mean, you need to identify on which product or process that you would like to work on. Then for that product or process, you will have to create a current state drawing. That is mapping the current state, identify all the actions that do not create value and you also need to prioritize which are the value adding activities and try to make them more efficient. Then the next step would be creating a future state drawing. After uh, removing all the non-value added activities, you need to now create a future state drawing which would uh, help you develop the map concept for the future state and you have to take the approval of your stakeholders and process participants. Once this is done, the fourth and final step would be the implementation plan. You will have to uh, define actions and drive towards the future state. After creating uh, the plan, uh, you will have to make sure that all, all the changes and required interventions are made. Coming back to flow of the value, and value stream mapping. The first step as we discussed was uh, define value or the product or process that you would like to do. So the defined value could be a deliverable as seen by the customer which is usable, which is defined in terms of whole products or service, which is critical as start point and specific to the project or customer. The second step again was the draw the value stream mapping where you draw the current state map uh, downstream to upstream you mention all the wake times, cycle times and lead times and make sure all of them are captured. The next step is like identifying value added services and non value added steps. Non value added steps are usually looked upon as base steps and here we have examples uh, of non value adding application uh, steps application to the IT industry or the software. If in IT industry an overproduction could be extra features or features that are of no use to the customer and being added. Uh, a transportation waste could be like building the wrong thing or waiting for the FTP or copy or etc. Emotion based could be task switching or walking, searching for the information manually and inventory waste could be partially done work, uh, not released for further activity. Waiting would be equipment or resource not working, waiting for the information work completion. If some people are on leave, we are need for some information from them, that could be a waiting waste. Over processing again would mean like documentation or unused artifacts or code that is not part of the final product or unnecessary meetings. Defects could mean like bugs created in the uh, code or defects or rework. Again, unused employee creativity would be unusing team members creativity, not using the employees capabilities to the maximum. Once we identify all the non-value added steps, uh, we need to make sure we remove all the base and bottlenecks. Bottlenecks like traditional boundaries of jobs, career functions and firms should be removed. Specific work practices and tools should be questioned. Optimizing, again we need to also optimize the value add steps to the maximum extent possible. Once that is done, we create a one piece flow which is the future state value stream mapping. Here we need to create cells, uh, cell is like again a close arrangement of workstation, people in a processing sequence, equipment need to be organized to follow the flow as of material as per the value stream. Process mapping or value stream mapping. Uh, here uh, we could see a 24 icon set for lean manufacturing which are typically used and which are not mandated anywhere. So if you look at the first icon, it depicts a customer or supplier. The second is a dedicated process box. In the top box, uh, you would define what processes and in the bottom you would write uh, if there are any lead times or delay times or base stage any cover. 
Similarly, the, the crooked arrow shows that is an electronic information flow. It could be email or fax or anything. It's straight arrow is a manual information flow where people are moving from one place to another for exchanging it. The truck symbol shows movement of a product or process or a service from one area to another. Similarly, we have some more uh, icons like buffer, safety, inventory, operator, a U-shaped cell. But all these icons are not mandated by anyone. This could be used for creating your value stream mapping. But uh, for our simplicity, in the examples that we are going to use, we are going to use normal boxes for depicting a value stream mapping. So now uh, let us look at the value stream mapping examples that we have. The first example is a value stream mapping of a petrol station or a gas station example. Uh, typically, the this is a process that uh, flow is followed in India. So let us uh, look at the process. So first the customer enters the petrol station, then he would uh, uh, find the pump with the smallest queue, then he would wait in the queue, and then the customer makes the payment for the fuel, then the customer would stop his vehicle, then again the helper or attendant would come and fill the tank, then after filling the tank, uh, the customer would start the vehicle, then he would carefully move, avoiding other standing traffic, and finally exit. When we look at the entire flow, there is only one value adding step for the customer, that is filling his tank. The other steps all are non-value adding for the customer. And the goal of the value stream map is to eliminate or make the non-value adding activities more efficient. Because in some scenarios we cannot uh, remove or eliminate all the non-value adding activities, then it is we need to make sure we make them more efficient, more personal and more emotional. For example, uh, in the second step where the customer needs to find the pump in the smallest queue, we could uh, hire some attendants who will direct the customers to the smallest queue which is available right now. Uh, for customers for waiting in a queue, we could decrease the delay time or delay time by having more number of petrol pumps in the single station. For customer making payment, there could be some prepaid cards or online payment that he does even before entering the petrol bank. So these are some of the things that we could uh, do to make the non-value add activities more efficient and emotional. But uh, that does not say that uh, the entire flow would, the number of steps in the flow would decrease. For that, we'll have to use more innovative ideas probably we'll have a McDonald's or a Subway in a petrol pump and the customer would go and have their meal while the valet or the attendant would go and fill up their petrol. Or there could be some kind of online petrol filling uh, process where the customer would pay and uh, define the amount of petrol or diesel he would require and define the time where the attendant would come to his place and fill up his tank. Instead of he coming to the station, then waiting for the queue and making the payment and then exiting. These are some kind of innovative things that the customer could do in order to, sorry, not the customer, we could do in order to decrease the number of steps for the customer. So uh, here we have uh, one more example uh, of a customer entering a supermarket and purchasing this product. So let us look at the flow of this process. First the customer would enter the supermarket, then he would find a parking space, park his vehicle and again um, he would pick up a sh enter the sh uh, supermarket, uh, pick up a shopping cart. Then the customer would move through the supermarket uh, searching for the products that are required. He would then pick up all the things required and move towards the billing counter. Then again he would stand in the queue. and he again have to wait while turn comes up and the cashier is billing his product. Then the customer pays the cashier. He picks up his bag and moves towards his vehicle and the customer exits the supermarket. Out of all the steps, 
probably there is not even one value adding step for the customer until and until he goes back to his home and uses the products that he buys. So how could we eliminate the non-value added activities or make them more efficient? Uh, we could ha have a valet service where the customer's car would be parked by the valet. Uh, uh, there could be attendants who could guide the customer to the product he would require instead of him browsing through the entire area. Then there could be more number of more number of uh, cashier counters so that the queue would be reduced and customer paying the cash would be timely, would be decreased. So these are some of the steps where the process of removing or or making the non-value adding uh, services could be made more efficient. So what we could say that without change there could be then no improvement. As Ms. Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So if you're trying to do the same process mapping again and again without making any significant changes, uh, then there would be no improvement in the process flow. So people would be waiting in the queues for the same time and there would be delays and lead times which would still exist. So you need to make significant changes so that there is great improvement in the process flow. Now let us look at an example uh, where there has been innovative uh, innovation and there has been a significant change in how a customer would shop at a supermarket. So in Korea uh, there is a new idea called something has come up called as the virtual supermarket. So where uh, pictures depicting uh, a life-size supermarket have been put up uh, in the subways or in the bus stops where people usually wait for like 15 to 20 minutes waiting for the bus while they go to work. So these have life-size images of all the products which would be available in the supermarket and the users while waiting for the train or the bus could use their smartphone to read the barcodes on the products and immediately using a credit card payment online their products would be shipped to their home by the end of the day before they reach their home. So nowadays everyone would have a smartphone and this has made a drastic change and this has even helped the supermarkets uh, cut down their inventory costs, their setup costs and this has also led them to be uh, from the fifth position to the second position in the Korean supermarkets. So these are the kind of innovations we require so that there is a drastic uh, improvement in the process flow. Uh, let me say that value stream mapping helps you find what are the non-value added activities and what are the value added activities. It shows you what are the ways that needs to be removed or should be made more efficient. But it does not tell you how to do it. It is up to you. Most of the, all the lean tools do the same thing. They help you identify what are the changes to be done, but it is up to you to think what is to be done to make the process more efficient and perform well. So the key points to remember in value stream mapping are all it says that all processes have waste that will cost you money. No matter how good and efficient a process is, there is always a waste that will create a delay or a lead time which is again cost you money in it. Again, improvement uh, requires change. To change a process, you have to understand the process. So that is the most important step. Uh, so to improve a process first, you need to define the current state. Define each and every step of the flow from end to end so that you could find out what are the value adding steps and what are the non value adding steps. Process excellence will not be achieved without involving people at all levels of the organization. So in a sense it is not only the senior management who should be involved in this but also the ground workers and everyone so that you understand the process from their perspective so that you could bring in much more changes because at the end of the day they will be working on the ground floor 
uh, so that they understand where the maximum delay happening. So this in a sense will help you to eliminate or make the non-value added more much more efficient. So thank you everybody. Uh, so the next webinar would be uh, Concepts of Sampling by Mr. Nishan Khare, who is a lead consultant from Capgemini UK. He'll be taking up this webinar. It's on the 6th September, uh, same time, 7.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. To register for the webinar, you could uh, log into the website www.lasif.org or you could contact Mr. Varun Khare at contact at lasif.org. Uh, before we end this webinar, just a quick uh, recap about what about LASAP. Uh, LASAP is the Lean and Six Sigma International Board. It's a non-profit society. Uh, it's into the area of Lean Six Sigma and business organizational excellence. The main motive of LASAP is to spread knowledge in the area of organizational excellence. LASAP was conceptualized in 2009 and came into existence in 2010 and has been listed in 2011. Uh, LASIB has touched the lives of over 10,000 plus professionals from over 40 countries. There are members all over the world. Uh, you could see the picture which shows presence of LASIB all over the world. So time for question and answers. Okay. So one of the question is, uh, what are some of the industries in value stream has been used? Typically, the feeling is that uh, people feel that lean is only for manufacturing and value stream mapping would be used only in the manufacturing industry. But that's a myth. Value stream mapping could be used in every industry. It's been used in the service industry, the IT, the IDS, government, manufacturing. You could apply value stream mapping for everything, even for a process of such simple as making tea, making coffee. Okay, uh, we have one more question. Uh, would inspection and testing on a production line be considered non-value adding? Typically, a quality check or an inspection and texting uh, on the on the production line would probably take a delayed uh, time and delay the product delivery to the customer by at least two days or three days depending again on the product. For the customer in, in his perspective this is again a non-value adding service because uh, this is only creating a delay to his product. Uh, he expects a good quality product and on time and how much ever time we could reduce would help him and since in lean terminology it is a non-value adding service. So again uh, we have one more question which is how much time does it take to implement value stream mapping for one process. So creating a value stream mapping first you have to understand what is your current state and map the entire process. You will have to brainstorm and understand the process in and out from everyone's perspective. Then you'll have to identify what are the value and non-value adding services. Then think about how you could eliminate the non-value added services or make them more efficient or more emotional as possible. So again, it could take any time between one to three months depending on the process. If the process is much and more complex, then it would take at least six months to complete it. Okay, 
There is one more question which says when you have trouble with buy-in from some of the workers in the organization because either because they either don't want to change or state it takes too long to follow the process process any idea. So typically whenever there is, we try to change a process or make uh, it more efficient or probably cut down some of the people or start using some uh, computers instead of manual work, there is always a problem with buying from the workers. That is where change management comes into place and we'll have to make sure change is managed properly and that depends on the managers and senior leaders how they would change manage, manage the change. Okay, uh, I think that's all the questions we have. Uh, thank you everybody for your time. I think and I hope we have been value adding to you all. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.